Hi everyone. Uh, for those of you who haven't been here before, my name is Derek Royden. Uh, I uh, am a freelance writer. I've worked for a bunch of different outlets. Uh, right now, usually, uh, one of my pieces appears on missionofchange.org every week. Uh, it's a great uh, progressive, as they say, website. So uh, I hope that you'll take the chance to just check it out, even if you're not looking at my stuff, because as many of you know, uh, they've kind of altered the search results a lot of the time so that um, left-wing uh, news sites don't show up as early, so we need to support these voices as much as we can. And having said that, I'm going to talk about an article that was on Counterpunch. I think it was just a little over a week ago. Uh, a really kind of uh, disturbing uh, article written by a John Carroll MD. He's a medical doctor. He works in Port-au-Prince in Haiti. Uh, it's called Dispatch from Haiti, Trump and Breastfeeding. Now, Obviously, there are a few people who are less qualified to talk about this subject than I am, and I'd like to start from the beginning by saying, like, obviously, uh, in life, you know, uh, there are many times when women uh, are unable to breastfeed, and of course, no one should ever be judged for this, but, I mean, the evidence over time is stacked up uh, that um, breastfeeding is better than formula, uh, just better for the health of babies. So. Uh, we're just going to quote from this article because there's some really interesting stuff in it. He's done a little bit of research um, and he talks about uh, there's a 1974 article titled uh, The Baby Killer, um, unfortunately he doesn't put the publication, uh, which blew the lid off the Nestle bottle formula scandal. So this is in 1974. So this is one thing I wanted to emphasize too is that, uh, you know, while people are, are more, much more aware of these things now, uh, in a time when people were maybe less aware, uh, this was pervasive and ongoing as much as it, it still really is, unfortunately. So uh, the 1974 article titled The Baby Killer blew the lid off the Nestle bottle formula scandal. Companies like Nestle used women's, women in nurses' uniforms to sell their baby formula to women in the third world. Uh, they provided free samples to mothers who would use the formula. These women would then find their breasts stopped giving milk after a month of using the baby uh, the infant formula so now they ha now they have to now they have to buy the infant formula and so uh, the family income they need to pay for it now so the, yet the family income in many cases uh, in uh, in these countries is seven dollars a week a dollar a day uh, what unfolded was a tragedy uh, from mixing the baby water with unsafe water sources to not being able to afford the expensive baby formula and diluting it to make it last longer. The result was deaths of babies in the millions, malnourished babies with stunted growth condemned to a lifetime of physical and mental disability. A stunning example of free market murder feeding the world's children to an $11.5 billion industry. A million infant deaths a year are blamed on reliance on infant formula rather than breastfeeding. So that was in 1974. Now, that industry is now $70 billion industry. Um, so now to get to, you know, the author actually gets to uh, some of the science. He talks about uh, an article that appeared in uh, The Lancet, which is a British medical journal, uh, in 2016. And uh, I'm going to quote from this uh, in full as well. Uh, breast milk makes the world healthier, smarter, and more equal. These are the conclusions on breastfeeding. The deaths of 823,000 823,000 children, sorry, uh, and 20,000 mothers each year could be averted through universal breastfeeding, along with economic savings of US 300 billion. The series confirms the benefits of breastfeeding in fewer infections, increased intelligence, probable protection against overweight or being overweight and diabetes, and cancer prevention for mothers. Breastfeeding for all infants is strongly supported by both governmental and medical professional organizations because of its acknowledged direct benefits to the infant's nutrition, gastrointestinal function, host defense, and psychological well-being. Human milk compared with formula may provide continued protection against acute illnesses even after discontinuation of breastfeeding during the first few years of life. Breastfeeding decreases out-of-pocket expenditures because it reduces the expense of buying formula. In addition, because of the decreased risk of illness in breastfed infants, there is a reduction in out-of-pocket expenditures on co-payments for outpatient visits, hospitalizations, and medications, and a decrease in parental work absences. So, 
what is sold as a convenience is actually, in fact, the opposite. And this is one of the great problems that, you know, one of the great tragedies of our time is um, this isn't the only case where a company like Nestle's profits, and Nestle is certainly one of the worst offenders in the world, you know, um, I don't generally advocate for, no, I pretty much do, uh, people should not buy Nestle products. So, um, basically, this is a, just a, a huge, you know, problem that is actually kind of being sold as a solution. So, anyway, uh, now the article goes on to say, how is Donald Trump involved with breastfeeding? Well, an amazing event just happened several days ago. Right, so this is several days before, I believe, the 13th of July. Uh, the New York Times reported the following regarding a recent United Nations Health, Health Assembly. A resolution to encourage breastfeeding was expected to be approved quickly and easily by the hundreds of, of government delegates who gathered this spring in Geneva for the United Nations affiliated World, World Health Assembly. Based on decades of research, the resolution says that mother's milk is healthiest for children and countries should strive to limit the inaccurate or misleading marketing of breast milk substitutes. Then the United States delegation, embracing the, infant, the interests of infant formula manufacturers, upended the deliberations. So they sought to kind of like uh, water down uh, this resolution, and uh, they would do this by removing language that called on governments to protect, promote, and support breastfeeding. Uh, when this failed, they threatened people, the actual American delegation began to threaten people, including the country of Ecuador, uh, saying that uh, if they refused to drop the resolution, Washington would unleash punishing trade me measures and withdraw crucial military aid. The Ecuadorian government quickly acquiesced. In the end, the Americans' efforts were mostly unsuccessful. It was the Russians, actually, and oddly and strangely, who ultimately stepped in to introduce the measure, and the Americans didn't or couldn't threaten them. So the measure actually went through. But in, in the name of uh, protecting industry, uh, you know, and I, I'm sure if it hadn't have been the United States, I mean, they are pretty much one of the worst in terms of these kind of things. But I mean, there are many other capitalist countries who maybe would have gone along with the idea that there's no need to promote uh, having women breastfeed. And it's especially important, okay, in in poor countries where um, where it just simply the cost is much less and you know this has to be taken into account too it's it's important of course the most important thing is to talk about health outcomes uh, you know over the long term absolutely but we also this is also tied into issues of, of, of poverty and if we can you know rather than having advertising that convinces women that it's somehow going to be better for the babies to use formula, uh, women could just provide the milk for themselves. And, and as I say, this is not true in every case, but uh, it is what it is. So thank you all for, for tuning in. You can find the link to the Counterpunch article below. Uh, have a great day and uh, just keep enjoying your life. Thanks.